let's start looking back at the last two years. How quick and effective has the progress been since Paris 2015 from your point of view? Well, Paris Agreement really helped us take a leap, especially in the LDCs, because um, what you have to understand is that if you do not have a law or an agreement, doing something by ourselves without uh, some kind of um, forced um, intervention or some kind of treaty that has been signed, it's not very possible, specifically in a country like Bangladesh where you have a lot of people, a lot of sectors getting climate change affected. So because of Paris Agreement, what has happened is that the rate at which we were progressing in climate change related activities have gone up, have gone up say tenfold or twentyfold. So I think a lot of the successes are due to the Paris Agreement and us being involved in the Paris Agreement. Regarding the COP this year, what are your expectations coming from an LDC country, one of the most affected, affected countries? You know, as I said in my um, session that I just want us to collaborate and I think many other countries have youngsters who understand that without a collaboration among the least developed nations, we will always be fighting for the uh, climate finance funds and uh, when the donors see this, when the donors understand that we have no unity among, um, amongst ourselves, they might even back off. We might not get the money and if the money does not come in, there are no projects, right? So I think what would be really good this time if we can have a, say, a regional treaty, a regional treaty not involving all the countries but just some of the LDCs in a specific region and we work together under a project and according to the effects that are faced by each of these LDCs, we get the money. So no competition because there's a treaty there already so you know how much you're getting from, from before or previously. It was difficult because uh, we did not really know who's going to get the money so the competition was there. But with the treaty there's no competition, there's just collaboration. The interest of Bangladesh and also your scientific interest is strongly into this topic of uh, financing and the, to climate financing. Um, do you think this point is, is strong enough on the agenda of COP23? COP uh, climate finance? Not really. The problem is that uh, who will work on definitions when you have things that are in front of you and it's easier to solve. Because, uh, see, when you have something which is uh, inside a drawer and you have the same book on a table, do you go and open the drawer and take out the book or do you just take the table from the book, uh, book from the table? Of course, the book from the table, right? Because it's easier. So it's human nature that we will always try to solve the problems that are more prominent, that are there already, instead of going and trying to define something which is very difficult to do because it has policy implications. The developing nations will not like the definition given by the developed nations and vice versa. The moderately developed nations will have some other perspective of climate finance. So right now it's not strong, but it must be the contribution from climate finance because without money, none of this will work, right? None of the climate change projects are going to work. So let's talk money first. Let's fix the framework that is going to fetch us the money. Then you can talk about the projects that We'll use this money to be successful, hopefully, or fail. Because, you know, sometimes I feel, even if it fails, don't you learn a lot from it? So, projects that fail, those are also good. Because in the future, you will not do the same mistakes. Okay, so um, our project is basically trying to differentiate between climate finance and overseas development assistance. Because climate change has two components, right? Adaptation and mitigation. Mitigation definition is not the problem. The problem is that you have adaptation, you have development, and these two definitions are very similar. So what happens is that when the money comes in, there is double counting because a development project is also sometimes seen as an adaptation process. And there are some projects that are adaptation come, ad uh, development projects. So the money gets distributed, but then climate finance is an additional fund not a distributed or deviated fund and if a framework and a definition for climate finance is decided upon this is going to help in categorizing which project is which there will be no double counting transparency will go up accountability will go up as well 
regarding uh, the positions of the LDC countries, do you think, or what kind of conflicts do you see? Are there any uh, difference in, op in, in opinions, for example, regarding any points on the agenda? Well, um, nothing is written because it's a very political thing, okay? Nobody wants to offend the other country, especially if the other country is more powerful than the country, right? Other countries. So it's not really written in papers, it's not really out in the media. These are things that we hear when we do research. These are things that are implicated while we write policies or we try to help the policymakers make decisions. So the problem is that it's there, but it's not out in the open. If it's out in the open, you can always try to solve it, right? But when it's inside and you cannot really go and ask anybody that, oh, is this a problem? Can I solve it? That's when the big problem arises. And that's what we're facing now. Because the LDCs together will never come out and say that, oh, we do have a problem of competition. We do compete with each other. Because that's, that would be the wrong thing to say, right? But then we have to agree that we do compete. And then we have to collaborate. Until unless you accept the problem, you cannot solve it. You're quite into the negotiations, so um, is there any, anything specific that is being discussed, discussed? So something that is really a, um, yeah, a problem to the LDCs, something that is critical? <coughs> right now, um, the problem is at the root level. We have been hearing that because of the transparency and accountability problems, uh, the money that's coming in is not reaching the people that really need it. So a huge issue in all the LDCs, I would say, is corruption. That the money goes there, but then it vanishes. It does not go to the root level people. So you actually need people there between the people who are disbursing the funds and the people who are getting the funds. This can be from international organizations, the multilateral organizations that are giving the money, the, you're giving the money in the first place. And these people can make sure that the money reaches there. And I think this should be a very important agenda this time, that there should be intermediaries. You have intermediaries between the donors and the recipients, right? You must have intermediaries between the recipients as well as the people who are getting the money as well, to make it more accountable and more transparent. Considering uh, transparency, considering... Um, accountability. Yeah, accountability also. Uh, do you see any strong and uh, motivated progress being made in Bangladesh? TIB, Transparency International Bangladesh, is a Bangladesh organization and them claiming being a part of Bangladesh that our transparency is so low. I think that will tell you that we we have come a long way because previously you would not hear uh, a tra uh, uh, an organization of the country blaming the country or criticizing the country, right? As I said, accepting the problem matters and we have accepted the problem and accepting the problem is the first step. So we have already taken the first step, right? And now, the, now, without the help of the other LDCs, without the help of the donors, the people like us, for example, who are doing research, this will not be possible, but we have taken the first step. So I think in the next few years, we are going to be able to increase our transparency levels as well as accountability. This project will help in that as well. Because uh, we are going to propose a framework. I do not know how much acceptance it will get at the government level, but we are going to hand it out to the public. And that is going to create impact because any change that comes, it does not come from a government. It comes from the public. If the public wants it, then the government is supposed to do it. Okay, what is your strongest hope you have considering this COP now, COP23 in uh, Bonn? Strongest hope? Uh, I have several hopes from this COP. <laughs> well, one would be, beca because I'm from Bangladesh, so I I'll talk about Bangladesh a little bit, that because we are in competition but then we do not have very good negotiators you know talkers because I gave you the courtroom example right it doesn't matter who is innocent until unless you can uh, provide evidence the money is not going to come in the person is not going to be announced innocent the same thing happens to Bangladesh I think it would be really good if this time we actually are able to represent Bangladesh's problems so that we do not have to compete so much and also for the general from the general perspective uh, because the money is the is the source of the projects because without the money the projects will not start let alone work right so if 
certain people are given or a certain organization, just like OECD helped uh, define ODA, Overseas Development Assistance, because certain organization is given the responsibility to define climate finance, and we get that in our hand, and you have the framework from our project to back it up. I think that would be the best thing for COP23, according to me.